Hello, I'm Jeff. Uh, I've been asked to talk about my kit for uh, boudoir uh, photography particularly, and so here I am. It's actually very straightforward. Um, I have six lenses, but uh, I uh, only really use three of them. So they range in focal length uh, from 14 millimeters to 35 millimeters to 50, another 50, 85 and 100. So you can quickly take two of these out. So this 100, I inherited it from my dad. It's uh, about 70 years old and uh, it's all right. It's just not that good. It's not good enough. And 100 millimeters is a long focal distance to try and get away with for boudoir. Likewise, 14 millimeters is just way too wide. So um, you want to produce images that are pleasing to the eye. And part of that is for human beings to recognize human beings as being human beings. And uh, super wide angle lenses like a 14 millimeter uh, just distort everything. And so I've never used it for boudoir. I never will probably. Um, so I've got a couple of uh, shots from non-boudoir stuff just to show you what it does. <clears throat> I've got two 50 millimeter ones. This one's about 50 years old uh, and it's, it produces a very uh, sort of, uh, it produces a unique effect, uh, which again, I, I haven't used for boudoir yet. I might do at some point, but uh, that's out. So we are, the real ones to choose from are 35 millimeter, 50 millimeter and 85. And I have used all three for boudoir. My criteria are that I want the, uh, I want the shots to look as good as they can and and for my life as a practical uh, working photographer to be as uh, as easy as possible so um 85 millimeters is a really nice focal length it's classically used for portraits but boudoir shots aren't really portraits and 85 millimeters is again a struggle to get into most uh domestic rooms and i shoot from my home studio and actually frankly most studios you wouldn't be able to use an 85 mil in really so I very rarely use this. I have used it, but you know, generally speaking, I haven't. This 50 mil is the first lens that I got with my camera. And so I use this exclusively for about six months. And uh, I really like it. It's um, it's pretty much the cheapest um, sort of half decent lens that you can get for a full frame camera. It's small, it's light, it just does the job really well. Uh, but um, it's 50 mil is, is all right in terms of focal length doesn't quite work with my my home. So my first couple of shoots, I realized that I was having trouble getting uh, the model client in fully in shot with me in the room. So sometimes I'd, ha I'd have to retreat out of the room. That's when I started doing the kind of the, the voyeur type look, uh, which I now do that sometimes, even though I don't have to. And so this 35 millimeter, as if you want to know, it's the uh, Sigma 35 mil f 1.4. Um, and uh, 35 mil uh, is the one that's on my camera for the vast majority of the time. It pretty much lives on the camera. I'd say 90% of the shots that I do now for boudoir are with this uh, lens because it's uh, 35 mil is uh, a focal length, which <clears throat> there's no, there's no real direct science to this, but it's kind of equivalent to the human eye. If you go much wider than this, you get distortion. Uh, so I've seen 25 millimeter lenses and that's when you can, you can actually tell when things are starting to, to be distorted. Um, and, uh, but it allows you to get everything in. And this is, this is a quality lens. It's kind of, you know, it does everything I, I need. So really when it comes down to it, kit, it's camera and lens, this lens, the camera, Is this one uh, Sony a7 III I've had it for about two years now um, full frame camera and it does absolutely everything that I need it to do uh, there are always things that you could uh, if you spent more money you could get uh, something uh, some more bells and whistles but you don't need them most of the time so it's pretty simple really when it comes down to it if you have a shoot with me you will see this setup so it allows me to hold, hold my hands nice and comfortably. However, that's not the whole story. So boudoir um, is less about technical perfection and it's more about creative endeavor. It's kind of, it's about trying to create a look. I've said this before in a few posts that um, it's not 
what it is, it's what it looks like. So there are some uh, things which I've started bringing into Boudoir, uh, which I'm going to continue to do because they either work or they don't, but when they work, they work really well. Hold on. <clears throat> okay. So, so I sometimes use prisms. Um, and all they are is physical objects, usually made of glass or plastic, that go uh, between the uh, lens and the subject, which uh, distort the light, distort the image in some way. And this is your basic one, so it's a, a triangle. And uh, I don't use this one much because, frankly, it's a pain. If you imagine the angles, they're, because they're sort of truly flat, if you bounce something off, you kind of get an entire uh, picture in the within the picture if you see what I mean so it's kind of it reflects something almost in its entirety on your image so but I have used it um, and uh, it does work quite well when it works <clears throat> most recently I got a split diopter and again that's kind of basically the same thing so it, it goes on the front of the lens and the bit that shoots through this bit is uh, uninterrupted by anything else that's your true image and then this bit um, it uh, refracts the light um, and, dis and distorts it slightly. So you get uh, a particular effect, which I suppose you could probably get in post-production if you really wanted to, but um, I've been using it uh, on the front of the camera to, uh, to good effect recently. This one I haven't actually used yet, but this is, this is next to try. Forget about this gubbins, this is just a way to get it onto the camera. It's this. So same, same kind of thing. If you imagine shooting, shooting through uh, shooting through this okay, and usually you shoot through part of it so it's kind of you have it uh, just covering the lens and you sort of that kind of thing. The trouble with using prisms and stuff on the front of the camera is because you're shooting through it and it's actually happening in, in the camera rather than in post-production. They're a one-time thing so you can get things perfectly uh, well first time or you can spend quite a few shots trying to get the shot that works but it can be worth it. And then from the What's next? Um, things like this can work. So this is just a ca uh, candle holder. Um, but I'm going to try in my next shoot. I'm going to try taking out the base and shooting through it. And what may or may not happen, I'm not sure yet, is that the light bounces off all these inside and creates something going on. I've no idea. But um, that's that's what I'm going to try next. But when it comes down to it, full frame camera, 35 millimeter lens. That's it. 